All right, so let's do your introduction. This is Troy. I came over. Troy's going to tune the bike. He works with Bryn Tuning. Yeah, yeah. So basically what we're going to do here today is we're taking off the factory restrictions from the motorcycle. Um, there's a lot of enemy U.S. bikes. There's a lot of throttle restrictions from the second, fourth gear, basically some nasty ones. So we're going to be getting rid of those restrictions from the dead throttle from like, I don't know, what is it, like 4,000 RPM, like 10,000 RPM? Everybody's seeing the dead spot. Even in my videos, they can see it. They, do, they don't even need to look at a dyno. They can just see in my videos that it's got this big old flat spot where nothing's happening. So basically what we're doing is we're taking off a lot of restrictions. Um, this is a stage one package, basically we're just flashing the bike. And because you have the TFT update, we're gonna do a couple videos with the air intake to kind of show what we're gonna do with the flapper. Now, I'm not taking apart the bike to do the flapper kit on this motorcycle. We're actually gonna force the flappers open that are on the intake with the uh, flash itself. So as soon as we key it on, it should open up instead of opening up to 6,000 RPM. So we'll do a couple rides uh, before and after. Before will be stock and see what the intake air temperature reads on the motorcycle. And then after is going to be with the stage one with the flappers open. We'll see the difference between the air intake temperatures. Now, if the air intake is high, it pulls a lot of power from this motorcycle. Right now it's reading 123 degrees and 72 degrees outside. Yeah, it's pretty it's nice out. Issue. Yeah. Thermodynamics, it's uh, less dense air, hotter, which means it has to start pulling ignition out of the bike and things like that. So when light to light, it'll feel a little more sluggish and lazy just getting out of the hole, basically. Right. We're going to fix that. So we're going to search off the dash now and then press OK. That's nice that you don't have to, you figured out a way not to take the air box off because you guys got guys like me out there, I ain't taking no air box off the bike. Yeah, we found it in the software. Um, uh, so basically what's going to happen is instead of us have, and I still recommend that kit because with that kit, you're still pulling out stuff that's still in the air box that's taking air away from getting to the actual um, bike itself. Right. Okay there. It's analyzing log real quick here. One second and it should be done. Then you're gonna see a night day difference. Mm. And we did the um we we just did the uh draggy sixty through one thirty, which is what, five point three? Yeah, something in the fives, yeah. But we had you start in second gear to be fair. Like yeah. it's slow times so for a S one thousand R R. We had you start in second gear at 40 miles per hour. Correct. Go up to the 130. So now we're going to try the same exact thing again, but with the flash and see what the time difference is between the two for 60 through 130. This will be different than a dyno test because this is real world GPS data, meaning your bike is actually on the road. We get to see the difference between pre flash and post flash rather than the dyno, which has other variables. Even tire pressure can change 10 wheel horsepower in a motorcycle. Oh, wow. Dynos, I mean, it's yeah. ridiculous. So we're going to give this thing a go. I think we're all done here. So we're bringing you the real world and I am going to bring you another dyno test. It's going to be on the same dyno so hopefully we got the same deal going and we can get out some numbers. But we have two different uh, tests here so that's a great moment. Four, dude. Tuning Flasher. This is what you guys get when you order from Bren Tuning. This comes right to your mailbox. Work. Writing. So we got factory file in there right now. Mm -hmm. We got stage one plus flappers. Okay. Okay. Flappers are what we did the modification for to keep the flappers open when we key the bike on. So we're going to choose that one. I heard something. Yeah. It's resetting a few things. It's actually getting juicier. You can hear it happening. So warning, it just kind of gives you a warning. It just basically says, connect your bike to a battery. Yours is going to be really fast, so there's no worry about that. So we're going to switch on the keyboard. All right, that dashboard, keyboard. Hmm. <laughs> uh, here all day. You were just on the computer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, warning again. Okay. I like that spells please. Uh oh. <laughs> I gotta talk to someone. Uh, the Plus. software engineer. Isn't that you too? Plus wait. <laughs> At least you know a human made it. <laughs> That's true. It wasn't a robot. 
this stuff actually works. Oh yeah, we're gonna you're gonna see right now whether the spelling is right or not. Because <laughs> on my 2015, man, I ended up riding another person's 2015 after I did mine, and it was not the same. Mm -hmm. Even though when I first tuned it, I didn't feel immediately some humongous jump. Um, but then I, I guess I just got used to it. And then after getting someone, no communication with engine control. That's normal. Multi-system affected, ride carefully to the next specialist workshop. That's perfectly normal, don't worry about that. I see some people that like, freak out about that. I think I got this message after the bike got hot. Oh really? Yeah. How hot did it get? I don't know. It was been really damn hot. It was over a hundred out, I know that. And we were out and about. So it's starting to flash right now. Okay. It's going to take a couple minutes to do the first time. But you see it do that, and then it'll, it'll actually scale through different things, windows here, and more errors and stuff, but just let it keep on doing its thing. Yeah, Great. Nothing wrong with a lot of data. Okay, so nothing there. Let's see if you key it on if it comes out. Yeah, already. As soon as he started the engine, they opened up. Right when started. See it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can see the air filter now. Yeah, but before, it was closed. Yep. Yeah. That's good, man. Yeah. And now we have the exhaust valve open, so the bike actually sounds a little more robust. Yeah. Yeah, I can hear that. Hear it better? Oh yeah. Well, yeah, that sounded a lot different right there. I've actually seen I've actually seen some people um, do the acro all the mm. way up to here and just do the stock pipe from there on so they don't get pulled over. <laughs> hey, well. It's actually flows pretty well. The power difference is nominal. Really? If you want to put the stock muffler on a, a full system right it would really tell i guess mean, with a flashlight or whatever but um yeah the muffler itself man it's actually pretty decent it sounds pretty good once you get restricted so now that we're done with this i'll do that air intake video real quick let's do it and i'm gonna ride around the block real fast for you just to make sure everything's done right let's do it okay. actually i'm gonna take the helmet off i'm gonna give the helmet to you one sec, let me, let me go out there real fast. I just did that video real quick. Let me just make sure this thing's not gonna go in the limp mode. Sometimes we, we put the throttle up too high. Oh, oh my God. That bike is next level. Miles per hour. All right, let's go. what I needed. You know it. Wow. Thank you, Bryn Tuning. This is how the BMW is supposed to be. I gotta shake your hand, man. <laughs> well done, my friend. Well done. Let's see the dragon yeah, let's see it. It, the exhaust is louder, oh, it's no, I, 100%. I heard it, it was completely different sounding. Yeah. Um, it revs out to 15,000 now too. There is just no, it's immediate throttle response now. Uh, compared to... 4.5. Wow. Compared to what, 5.3? Let me look at the other time real quick. That's too funny. Hold on, let's look at the history real fast. And this is actually hotter, so 500 feet more. Right. PA. Yeah. So and it was windier. So here we go. Here's it. 629, that's you right there, and mm -hmm. the 629 right there. So here's your first one, 5.3, right? 60 through 130. Right. And we started in second gear, just like you did the second time, right? Exactly. Okay, so second gear, 40 miles an hour start, both times, 
5.3 right there. Valid test. Right there. Boom. Another valid test. 4.5. You chipped off 0.8 seconds just from a flash. Right. That is <laughs> night and day. Just from a flash. Yeah. Brent. All right. I need the Brent tuning sticker now. You got them? I got, I got a couple. All right. <laughs> yeah. We need to put the final layer on there, which is the well, Bren tuning you, sticker. And when you get your exhaust, come back. We'll get to flash for that too. Excellent. We'll unlock a little more. We can even try the MR12. I'm not using that stuff. Yeah. I, uh, you know what? I want to see what the number you can put out is. The, the high number. So when I go get this thing dyno test again, yeah, I want to run that stuff. Yeah, yeah. You can take it if you want. Okay. I mean, you well, yeah, I can't take it today. But yeah, I, mean, I can come back with a vehicle. Yeah, it's like nine months old. It's like $140 for that thing. So you can just take it. Oh, you're the man, and dude. Make sure you use it because that's like we call Jesus piss right there. Right. Stuff, uh, no, I'm going to use it. It stinks the whole garage up. I, I'm going to... So I need to completely deplete all the 91 that I have in there yeah. before I do the dyno. Yeah, the, the more you get out of this, the better the results are going to be. Right, like so I need pure 12. Yeah, and the way this works is one flash is basically going to do it all. Right, so when that's you incredible. The exhaust, right. flash it for the exhaust, you can take that you know, at the same time. And then um, when we flash it for the exhaust, we'll also in implement the MR12 into it. Right. So as soon as we dump it in, you don't have to tune anything or touch anything. That's it incredible. It automatically sees that it's in there, basically, and it's adaptive, so it'll start adding timing to it. Because what the bike does, basically, is it has like a whole bunch of timing tables, and it keeps on trying to high, or raise them or lower them. And if it raises them, it sees knock, basically. It'll start taking it down to a different ignition table that has lower ignition or less advanced ignition. Right. The higher it goes and less knock it's easy to just keep going up and up and up. So that's when you see like, you know, three or four pulls, it starts getting stronger, 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 and all of a sudden it's making 10 wheel horsepower over what it was with 91. So that'll be it. That's incredible. Just a, a fuel sensor. You don't got to do no crazy going in. You don't got to replug the flasher in. None of that crazy course, stuff. It, you basically have, you have wide bands in here. We command an AFR target. And if you wanted to do a sniffer on for the video, you do. You can see the AFR is going to be nice and steady the whole way. Right. Because it's, it's working off the factory system, which is wide band, which is the first bike that I know of that actually has wide bands in it. That's great. It's all narrow band crap on this bike. Right. Most other bikes, wide band stuff is what brand new cars use. Right. Exact fuel trims. That's how we can work flex fuel in it as well. Yeah, good stuff, man. Um, I do have a, a hot question for you uh, because of something you said earlier. So I said, wow, these things are coming unlocked now because my old one stopped at 186 reading. <laughs> This one, I got it up to 189 and thinking to myself, oh, it's unlocked. And now you're telling me it stops at 193. Yeah, yeah, 193 will stop indicating it that. Do you got the fix for that? Not at the moment, but working on it. Working on it, okay. It's one of those things. I mean, the most important thing was to try and get that flap broken because a lot of customers, they didn't want to do the stage two because you basically are pulling the tank off the bike. Right. You're pulling the airbox off the bike. And basically, you just see bare cylinders almost. Right. Bare throttle bodies. And a lot of people didn't want to get that dirty with the bike. Yeah. So um, this opening the flaps just with the mechanical stuff is the best thing we can do. Yeah, that was a big deal. Indicating was kind of a secondary thing. You know, it's for people. I mean, of course, people want to do it, but um, it's not really the most important thing at the moment. We're right. We're working on the flex tool right now, and air coming in there at the moment. So... Before I put the flex fuel in, am I already mapped for flex fuel now, or do, is that no. after exhaust we'll, we'll do, do that? After the exhaust. Okay, cool. We're working in there right now. We're testing it, making right. sure it's one hundred percent. I mean, I was doing it back in July. Right. Last July, my bike, uh, my uh, the twenty twenty, I was on. Right. Um, and it was working just fine. Um, so now we're just working on you know cold starts, things like that, because E eighty five ethanol, typically cold starts, there's some issues if it's too cold, and so hmm. working on all these things, right. sure it's nice and reliable. Right. I mean, even like your, do you have issues with your cold start ever on your bike? It puts. It goes put. That's a leaf pop, pop actually, because the bike is so lean, it's actually popping, it's farting out of the engine. Yeah, it sounds like a scooter. Yeah, now we'll do it. Sounds well. like a. 20 horsepower scooter when it starts up and then it figures it, it takes a minute to figure it out yeah you'll no longer have that super high idle it'll right be a static it's almost like a choke was pulled out yes. yeah automatic so choke <laughs> so, yeah um yeah no as soon as you fire this thing on it'll be a static idle now it won't just raise up out of nowhere it won't right or anything nice. it's gonna be nice and steady that was another thing they had to do for basically for emissions right because what's happening is 
the bike has to emit a certain amount of hydrocarbons, so if they lean it out really far, it's not emitting those hydrocarbons anymore. So they just leaned it out so far where the bike's almost shutting down, you know? Guys, that's Bren tuning talk right there. I don't know what he just said. It sounds real technical. I hope you guys are understanding it. But that's why we go to these guys, because these guys know what they're doing. This bike feels so much different now, man. It punches right away. Second gear, it just punches with the wheelie and starts immediately. It's yeah, great. It's almost now sharpened. So even tipping and stuff like that, it's going to be sharpened. So it feels more like a race bike. Right. It's not too aggressive to the point where you're going to turn. It's going to jolt you or anything. Right. But it is more aggressive towards the rider input. So now you get 100% of throttle all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Well done, Troy. Well done. Very impressive work you do here. Stuff works, man. Yeah. Do you want to give a little um, showcase on your bike? Sure. What do we got done? So because there's a lot of I got a lot of uh, fans out there who are Ducati riders. Oh yeah. No, so the V4S I got one of the first ones that came in um, to California in 2018, and I uh, did a full exhaust. I did all the work myself. Did all the carbon fiber. This is all custom carbon fiber down here from Peter Lee. Um, he's in Germany. He's the guy that does all the stuff for Gillies, uh, their carbon, so BMW and things like that. I mean, I pretty much made this thing uh, special. Yeah. Speciale, however you pronounce it. Um, except it's just a regular V4 because I didn't like the color scheme that they had going on those ones. It would be nice to have the forged uh, magnesium wheels, but the forged aluminums are fine for me. Like they're, they're really nice wheels. Yeah. But yeah. No, this, this thing making well over 200 the tire, uh, just on pump gas. So it's it's brutal. You take this thing in second gear and do that, and it's <laughs> it's, it's a nice bike and straight this up. It's different when you ride it than this. This is more. I would compare this more to like a McLaren. Right. BMW. And this is more like a Ferrari. Right. Whereas the McLaren is actually faster than Ferrari. I, I, you just can't say, feel it. Yeah, I'll, I'll hands down say it, this bike is faster than the Ducati. Now the Ducati really shines below like 100 miles an hour against this bike as far as we're talking straight speed. Right. Anything over 140, this bike starts starts going like this through it. So <laughs> happens, but, um, this bike's a lot of fun. I mean, it's a different animal. Even when, Every time you shift, it's different than these bikes with exhaust. This will straight up like, it's almost like a shotgun. Right. Every single time it hits, it cracks in the gear. Like it's a nasty crack. That yeah. Comes, and you can hear it everywhere. Like, <laughs> I've had people running through here on the back straight and it just sounds like literally a shotgun blast when they ship going by. It's, it's insane. Have you weighed this bike? This bike, a uh, 415. That's great. Yeah, and that's like, I, I don't know what the tank was at that point. I think it was like half full or Right. Something. That tank, but it was a wet weight. That is uh, a good weight. Yeah, no, I've, I've done some, some modifications. I mean, I went pretty crazy, even to the point where I took the regular Ducati logo off of here and just put the Ducati Corsa logo on. <laughs> dude, no one would notice that except me. You know? Well, no, dude. I can tell this bike is sexy, man, and um, I see Panigale Kings. You know, Panigale King, the guy who does YouTube with me sometimes. Yeah. Um, his bike looks like total trash. Uh, yeah, this is pretty. I mean, I, I go in and clean everything. It's actually deep for cleaning, but yeah, yeah. the shock is clean. Everything is, you can eat off. The, the I saw the colors. This titanium is turning under here in the oh, exhaust. Yeah. This is gorgeous, man. Oh yeah, beautiful. This system is gorgeous on this bike. Yeah, it's a gorgeous system. I mean, it's like I hit the, all the pieces off, and you take all the uh, the heat shielding off. It's just all wrapped up. It almost right. like spaghetti or something. <laughs> it actually doesn't even get that hot while you're on the bike. I mean, I'll admit it gets hot for a sport bike, but you know, it's nothing crazy. Yeah. Here it is, awesome. the final step in the process after you get the Bren Tune. You gotta put the Bren Tune sticker on. It's gotta have a sticker. Everybody knows that. Does this add as much horsepower as Max Wrist stickers do? Sticker charge, bro. Because Max Wrist stickers, they say on the street, give you an extra 10 horsepower. Is that right? That's word on the street. Their words, not mine. Take that to the track, all right. <laughs> You're all set, man. Thank you, Troy. Yeah, you are the man. I'll, I'll send you those screenshots for the uh, draggy. Oh, thank Can you. Can you put them in your video? Yeah, excellent. But yeah, that, you're all set, man. Until the next episode with Brent Tuning. I'm coming back soon, so we'll bring it to you guys. You gotta do stage two on it. It's the stage two coming. It's even more beast.